Welcome to all our ITBN viewers. Thank you for joining us. Today is a very special day. Why? Because today we celebrate exactly one year since we received the keys to Holy Land. So today I'm just going to be taking you through where it all began, where we are now, and where God Almighty is taking us. Please, come along with me. Yeah, so we will be driving to the Holy Land. Uh, we're driving to the Holy Land as we speak. Um, but just by way of introduction, the man of God, Prophet Philip Banda, received this vision that we are now seeing today, years and years back. I believe it was way before we even got to know about him. Um, because sometimes we think vision begins when you get to know a person, but no. He had this vision a long time ago. We are just basically seeing the end product of work that God began speaking up to him about um, those years back when we didn't even know him. So when, when the ministry started, all those years back, I believe the man of God always had it in his heart that we would have a permanent place as Impact for Christ Ministries where we would fellowship with one another, but more importantly, where we would worship God and where the knowledge of God would be made known to the whole world. Um, so for me, in my view, we, we are basically seeing the culmination of work that began in the heart of the man of God all those years back. So it's an interesting story that, that we, we are about to see because the man of God has always taught about vision. But you know, a lot of people tend to preach about something that they don't live. But it's very different with Prophet Philip Banda because what he preaches is what he lives. You know how passionate he is about vision. You know the many times that he has taught us about vision. And we not only see him teaching about vision, but we also see him living his own vision. So for me, Holy Land is the culmination of a vision that began to unfold all those years back. I remember we, when I first joined the ministry, I joined the ministry when, when the ministry was in Bramfontein uh, at Decorte Street while I was still a student. That's when I joined the ministry. And uh, at that time, the Impact for Christ Ministries was housed in a building in Bramfontein. But that's not where the ministry started, as I understand it. According to the men of God, they started fellowshipping at YWCA. It's a place in Bramfontein as well. They then moved to uh, the bigger Bramfontein building. Uh, from there, we moved, I believe it was around 2004 when Impact for Christ Ministries moved to number eight Small Street. And uh, it was in number eight Small Street that we stayed for quite some time. And while we were at number eight Small Street, the man of God had, has always been going out because the vision has always been burning in him. He's always been going out looking for a place that Impact for Christ Ministries can finally settle a place that Impact for Christ Ministries can finally call home without moving from one place to, to the other. When I think about the story of Impact for Christ Ministries, for me, I see it as in the same way rather that the children of Israel were. You will remember that God Almighty called the prophet Moses 
and gave Moses the vision to move the children of Israel out of Egypt to the land of promise. And when the children of Israel first came out of Egypt, they moved from one place to another, following the leading of the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. And according to the scriptures, wherever the during their journey throughout the wilderness, wherever, wherever the cloud rested, they would camp in that place until such a time as the cloud would lift and then that would be a sign for them to move on to the next camping site. So for me, that analogy resembles what we experienced as a ministry uh, through the Men of God, Prophet Philip Banda. We would move, we moved from uh, YWCA, the cloud then moved to the bigger building in Bramfontein in Decorca Street. We then moved in 2004 when the cloud moved to Marshalltown, number eight, small street. And now I believe that uh, the cloud has now moved to the land of promise. We've been through so many stages because remember the men of God teaches that vision unfolds. So I have been so privileged personally to witness the unfolding of the vision that the men of God has about Impact for Christ Ministries. It's quite exciting. I mean, we've been, he's, he's rather been going around looking for the right type of place. And he's been to a number of places, but none of the places he has been to resembles the vision that God told him about. And that's one thing that we should learn as a people, that just because a place looks okay in the natural, it does not mean that it resembles exactly what God Almighty had in mind. You have to have such high degree of sensitivity to carefully listen to the Holy Spirit because it is He who will tell you that yes, this is the place that I have prepared for you, that I have predestined for you. I mean, think about it. When, when the children of Israel were moving from the one place to another in the wilderness, there may have been places where they wanted to camp. For instance, when they were about to inherit the land, uh, some of the tribes camped before the River Jordan, but some of the tribes camped after the River Jordan, within the land of promise. But each of the tribes knew that this was the place that God has ordained for them. So I believe it was the same with the man of God. He didn't just accept any place that he saw being beautiful and everything he had to make perfectly sure that this is the land that that god has has given us i remember distinctly at one point when uh, there was a place around selby a big building that we wanted to move to because of the rapid growth that was happening at the time in the ministry and uh, the prophet went, looked at the place, but it was not the one. At one point, we had a look at a, a building in Carlton Center. Uh, I think it's called the Sky Ring. It's a place that could house a number of people. But when the man of God looked at it, he could see that, no, this is not, this is not the, the place. Um, I mean, we went, we... We, we've got a place where it's Shiloh now. Uh, when I saw the land, when I saw Shiloh, I thought, okay, Shiloh has got big land. It's big enough to, you know, to, to build a sanctuary for, for fellowship. But the visionary who is Prophet Philip Banda could tell that, no, even though Shiloh is big, the land is spacious and everything, it was not necessarily what he was looking for. It, it didn't quite fit the vision that God had given him. Um, it was only until recently when he went out still looking for land that he found uh, Holy Land. And I believe when he stepped on that land, something within him moved and he knew that yes, this is the place that God Almighty has ordained for impact 
for Christ Ministries. So it's a marvel to watch. It is the doing of the Lord and it's marvelous in our eyes. So every person who is a member of Impact for Christ Ministries today should count themselves privileged to see the unfolding and the fulfillment of God's vision about Impact for Christ Ministries. For me, I'm excited that uh, I have lived to see the fullness of the manifestation of the vision that the man of God has. It's exciting. We have possessed the land now. The only thing that left that is left is to develop the land, to make it the exact replica of what God Almighty has in mind. Remember, remember when, when Prophet Moses was about to build the tabernacle of the Lord. The Lord said to him, see that you build it according to the pattern that was shown to you on the mountain. And I can tell you now that uh, Prophet Philip Banda has the, the blueprint. He has seen the pattern of how the Holy Land should look like when it's completed. And I think it's for us who are surrounding him to help him to fulfill that vision help him in whichever way um, to make sure that this vision comes to pass. I believe that the acquiring the land itself is only a first step to a picture that is still to unfold. There is so much more to be done at Holy Land. There is so much more to accomplish. There is so much more to see. And more importantly, there is so much more to still experience. So I'm excited. I hope you are too. Um, it's a great time to be alive in the kingdom of God. You know, you can ask yourself, how is it that the man of God, uh, at the stage of life that he is in, he still looks so young, he still looks so vibrant, he still looks so energetic. I can tell you there's one thing that is driving him, and that is to see the fulfillment of the vision that God has, has given him. I mean, in his own words, he often says, uh, and he always says rather, that vision keeps you young. You should see the look on his face when, whenever he talks about his vision. You can see the excitement, you can see the energy, you can see the enthusiasm with which he talks about fulfilling his vision. It tells you that this thing is alive in, in him. To us it may not be such a reality, but to him it's a reality because he's already seen the end product. And he's closer now to fulfilling the vision than he was when he first started the ministry. So I share his enthusiasm. I'm equally as, uh, as, as enthusiastic as he is, but I, I suspect I might be wrong. Uh, this thing is alive in him. He's more excited than all of us to see him the fulfillment of this vision. So the only encouragement that I can have for you people listening to me is that let's support this vision. Let's not hold back on our support in whichever form, whether in terms of prayers, whether in forms of uh, resources that God has, has, has um, given us, Understand that you are blessed for such a time as this. I certainly know that I'm blessed for such a time as this. And I know that I have a role to play. Like the children of Israel, remember when, when uh, Moses was about to build the tabernacle for, for the Lord? The children of Israel contributed so much that they had to be stopped and they had to be told, look, we've got enough now to fulfill the vision that God gave Moses on the mountain. And we should, be, we should be doing the same. It's the same thing that happened when King, uh, King Solomon was about to build the temple for, for, for the Lord. All the kings surrounding him supplied him with gold, supplied him with uh, sycamore trees, supplied him with all the utensils and all the material and all the equipment necessary to make sure that the temple was built. And God Almighty not only supplied him with, uh, with, with these things that I've just mentioned, but he also supplied Solomon with 
the right people, people with the necessary skills to build the temple for, for God Almighty. It's a bit cold here, so you have to keep warm. Uh, but this is the land of promise. A beautiful, beautiful place. A spacious place. It's, it, it's got everything that we were looking for as a ministry. It's got everything that Prophet Philip Banda dreamed of. I mean, if you can look around, for instance, let's go to the side. Um, look at this place. It's beautiful. It's tranquil. It's peaceful. There is nothing spiritual that you cannot do here. From prayer, to reading the Bible, to meditating, to having quiet time in the presence of the Lord. Everything this place is designed for. So when we first arrived here, this place was not looking like this. You are now looking at this place in its developing stages. Um, when we first arrived here, we never had all this beauty that you see here today. We arrived here, and I believe this is the spot where the keys were handed over. Uh, men of God stood here before it was like this, and received the keys, and we moved a bit towards that direction, and this is when he told us about this place and you could see the excitement really in his eyes. And from here, we divided into groups and we went northward, eastward, southward, southward, westward, and we saw the vastness of the land. And the land is big. I mean, from where I'm standing, it goes right to the other side. It's a huge land. I tell you, this is the land of promise. This is the place where the fullness of the prophetic destiny of Impact for Christ Ministries will be realized. So this is the land of promise. We have finally arrived at the place that God Almighty had for us all these years. A place where we are going to see the fullness of the manifestation of the prophetic destiny of Impact for Christ Ministries. From YWCA in the chapel to Mission House in Parktown to Decorte Street in Bramfontein to Marshall Street, number eight small street. And now our own place, our own home, Holy Land, the land of promise. I'm so excited because the land is vast. We are going to do so many things here. We've acquired the land and now it's time to develop the land. Be part of it. I'm part of it. Don't lose out.